एस एन जे बी स्लेट सौ कांताबाई भवरलाल जी जैन कॉलेज ऑफ इंजिनियरिंग एंड डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर इंजिनियरिंग आय प्रोफेसर दीपाली पवार वुड लाइक टू एक्सटेंड अ वार्म वेलकम टू एवरी वन प्रेजेंट हियर टूडे फॉर वन वन डे ऑनलाइन फैकल्टी ओरिएंटेशन प्रोग्राम ऑन बिजनेस इंटेलिजेंस ऑर्गनाइज बाय अवर इंस्टिट्यूट इन असोसिएशन विथ बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज कंप्यूटर इंजिनियरिंग एस पी पी यू पुने आई वुड फर्स्टली लाइक टू वेलकम टू द एडवाइजरी कमिटी ऑफ कंप्यूटर इंजिनियरिंग पुने यूनिवर्सिटी डॉक्टर वर्षा पाटिल चेयरमन बी ओ एस कंप्यूटर डॉक्टर एस एस साने डॉक्टर एम एल दोरे डॉक्टर आर वी पाटिल डॉक्टर एस ए इतकर डॉक्टर प्रमोद पाटिल डॉक्टर परीक्षित महल्ले डॉक्टर पी एम यावलकर डॉक्टर गीतांजली काळे डॉक्टर स्वाती भाऊसार मिस्टर व्यंकटेश्वरन मिस्टर गिरीश खिलारी मिस्टर सचिन लोडा मेंबर्स ऑफ बी ओ एस कंप्युटर वेलकम ऑल आय नाव आय एक्सटेंड माय वॉम वेलकम अँड माय सिन्सिअर थँक्स टुवर्ड्स द सिलेबस सेटिंग कमिटी कोस चेअरमन डॉक्टर के राजेश्वरी वेलकम मॅम अँड द टीम हू डिझाईन बिझनेस इंटेलिजन्स सिलेबस इलेक्टिव्ह फोर डॉक्टर जावरे एस नितीन प्रोफेसर वाय के हँड वाय ए हँडगे डॉक्टर एम आर संघवी मिस्टर जी एस मोदानी मिस्टर सुभाष एस जी राठोड वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू अँड थँक्यू सो मच फॉर डुईंग वंडरफुल वर्क नाव ऑन बिहाप ऑफ ऑफ कंप्युटर ऑफ इंजिनिअरिंग ॲट एस एन जे बी लाईक टू कॉंग्रॅच्युलेट द इलेक्टेड न्यू बोर्ड ऑफ स्टडीज मेंबर्स डॉक्टर अमोल पोदगनवार डॉक्टर निलेश उके अँड डॉक्टर सचिन बहार कॉंग्रॅच्युलेशन्स वन्स अगेन नाव ऑल द स्टाफ मेंबर्स फ्रॉम डिफरंट कॉलेजेस अँड ऑल माय कलेग्स इट इज अवर प्लेजर टू हॅव यू ऑल हिअर नाव इट इज अन अमेझिंग अपॉर्च्युनिटी फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस दॅट टुडे वी हॅव थ्री रिसोर्स पर्सन्स विथ अस फॉर दिस एफ ओ पी ऑन बिझनेस इंटेलिजन्स हू विल फोकस ऑन द युनिट वाईज सिलेबस ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट अँड इट्स इम्पॉर्टंट कंटेंट टू बी कवर्ड इन द करिक्युलम नाव this is the firstly the schedule of today's fop program that will execute today now now the our first resource person that is uh, dr m r sangvi from snjb let so kantabai bhavarlal ji jain hello madam rajeshwari yes, madam is here so please ask her to address she will tell the importance of business intelligence course since she oh. is the chairman Okay, sir. Now I would like to uh, ask Rajeshwari, madam, can you uh, please focus on business intelligence subject? Please, ma'am. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Good Hello, morning, all of you. Yeah, able to hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Dipali, ma'am. And sir, thank you very much for that interruption. Actually, I am away from a meet <coughs> meeting for this program. uh so i just i want to give a quick view and uh, i want to thank my team who has wholeheartedly contributed so we used to think like lot of professional electives are offered to the students and in the interest of their job opportunities and um, we used to hear from the students for ms also business intelligence plays a major role and today itself you would have heard a news about microsoft uh, can anybody say what is the hot news about microsoft today everybody knows that okay so i'll say you the hot news is 1100 employees are sued by microsoft so in all these uh, situations and even previous uh, weeks we heard about amazon throwing people right laying off is a very common term now so in all these situations how our students will be empowered with lot of knowledge so uh, this course plays a major role so whenever uh, you teachers start with the course so you can say the importance of the course how the students will be different from general software developers in terms of a new uh, knowledge they will gain through this professional elective so business intelligence is a course which has lot of job opportunities so even for their ms it will be very much useful so you can give this idea uh, so i just want to share my screen is it possible one one quick glance so that you will uh, get an idea how to get into the course anyhow the faculties will share it i'll take only 2 minutes to elaborate is that is okay yeah 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 fine share, sir please sir yeah, yeah, yeah. and permit me oh ma'am please make her co-host yes sir
Yes, ma'am. You can share the screen now. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes I'm able to do that. Just a minute. So I just want to share this uh, screen. Actually, you are able to see the screen of uh, Tropicana. This is a this is a very famous uh, juice company. We know that long back when Tropicana started, the package was like this. And uh, the whenever the business is very good, we used to feel like again how to make it as multi million dollar business, right? So similarly, Tropicana came up with an idea. They spent a lot of money to design this packet. So a lot of brains sat together. They discussed, and then they came up with this packet. You know, uh, but surprisingly, this did not go well. Customers did not like this. Why? There were only few reasons. So our business intelligence team, they surveyed, they analyzed, and they came up with few solutions, few suggestions, or few problems. So once the problem is identified, then you will get into solution, right? So here, if you can, can somebody say me like, what is the difference? Is this package is attractive or is this is attractive? Okay, so I'll give you the reason. So the first one, if you see, you can see a natural orange. And the second package has an artificial glass, right? Even though if it, it is sophisticated, looks good, but still people like nature. So people had a sense of satisfaction when a juice is taken from uh, natural orange, straw directly into natural orange. This is also a conclusion, right? Number one. Number two is if you see this um, letters, it is horizontal, which is very easy for the eyes. And when you see this, it is vertical, which is not like uh, very easy to see, right? Visualization. So your third unit talks on visualization, graphs, charts, dashboards. So uh, all those things will be there in your uh, third unit. So similarly package, if you see on the top, uh, see even this, they did not like actually, the way this bottle here, it is not visible actually. So people like this type of cap actually. So this is one case study I'm just giving you quickly. Um, similarly, you can create an interest uh, with the students by sharing a lot of case studies. The subject should be full of case studies. That is uh, what we all wish. We all teachers, no? uh, whoever framed the syllabus with me. So like Zavre Madam, Sarika Madam, uh, she's there here. I don't know. Antage sir is there. Sangvi sir is there. Uh, yes, uh, okay. Thank you very much for all your contributions, sir. Modani sir, Rator sir, okay. So thank you very much for all your contribution. This is what we all wished. The subject should reach the students and students should get benefited. Thank you very much. Best wishes all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful words. Now, uh, for our today's uh, session, there are three resource persons. First one is Dr. M.R. Sangvi sir from SNJB Let's Have. Kantabai Bhavarlalji Jain. And the second resource person is Professor Sonali Lunath, ma'am, from PCCOE, College of Engineering, Pune. And third resource person is Professor Amol Shakadipi from SNJB, KB Jain College of Engineering, Chandwada. Now, our first resource person is Dr. M.R. Sangvi, sir. Nothing is impossible, only mindset is required. These are the words of man, his own vitrek. And yes, not nothing is impossible for him, for Dr. M.R. Sangvisar. He has been awarded a PhD in computer engineering from JNU Jodhpur. His research interest is in digital video watermarking. His teaching career spans more than 18 years, and he has held department head positions as well. His research has been disseminated in several internationally reputed journals and conferences. He has conducted 200 plus expert sessions on various colleges as well as industry. His area of interest include image and video processing, databases, IoT, data structures, big data analytics, and business intelligence. Sir has been awarded as a Promising Engineer Award by IEI Nasik, Adar Shikshak Puraskar by Mahavir International Nasik, Significant Contribution Award by CSI Chennai, Dejdut Tejas Award in Technical Category by Dejdut Nasik, Best HOD of the Year, CSI Mumbai, 
best teacher received by lokmat prerna award now i would like to request the vice principal of snjb skbj college of engineering dr mr sangvi sir to share his knowledge about decision support system and business intelligence and the architecture of data warehousing and business business intelligence over to you sir thank you so much yeah thank you madam well very good morning to all i'm really thankful to bos computer engineering and snjb's late south kbjn college of engineering chandwad for giving me this opportunity to put forth my views regarding business intelligence since we all have heard the way rajeshwari ma'am have cleared us the importance of business intelligence and she has correlated the thing into today's era so by observing the i hope the am i audible hello yes sir yeah so i hope the major thing is already set up in front of us and now it's our job to let's start with the business intelligence on behalf of snjb skbjn college of engineering i welcome you all all the participants i know that many of you must be uh, conducting this particular course first time and many of you must be masters into this particular course i'll be happy those who are masters can always add the inputs so that will be useful for all of us so this session will not be restricted with me only but it will be always you know open this will be open forum for all of you so let's begin the journey of business intelligence so faculty members as per when we are talking about fop that is faculty orientation program it is very much important that we need to focus more on like why this particular course is included in our computer engineering course program that we need to address and that we need to effectively tell to the students i think that job is done by rajeshri madam secondly we need to focus on from where we will get this particular content means where we will get this entire course material so uh, i know that many faculty members are you know hunting for the uh, various uh, presentations course material okay to make your job easy i am sharing you the entire details entire presentations on this particular blog i am sharing you the link into chat box so you, so that you can you can download the present entire presentation and you can use that particular presentation okay so this is what the session that we are actually conducting today and you will get all the ppts these are restricted in a use but you can get all the pdfs which are available here okay apart from that you can see that there are various like entire material of bi is available here on this particular study material okay this particular link is also available okay and i have shared this link with you on chat box so this way you can use that but before i start with the session i would like to showcase you the career opportunity part okay so this is what the career opportunity in our first session itself if we clear the students that what are the career opportunities i think the things will go on okay so i'll come on this particular slide soon but before that i wanted to showcase you the orientation of business intelligence course i am dr mahesh sangvi working as vice principal professor and he professor in department of computer engineering the outline of today's session where we will have the course orientation first well we'll see that teaching scheme prerequisite courses course objectives course outcomes then course content and then we will focus on the resource material which is available for the same you must be aware that the chairman of this particular course that is bi is dr rajeshwari ma'am and the course code is 310253 all this particular details must be known to us and we must share this things with the students and that is the reason i'm showcasing you all okay and these are you know these are the credit and this is what the theory hours which are allotted to that we all are aware that the examination pattern is like this now coming towards the course dependency to start with business intelligence it is very much important that we should ha have a knowledge of database management system the course which were there into third year as well as the course data science 
okay the course data sci science and big data analytics that is dsbda which is again included in on third year and the course machine learning included into final year once we have the basic knowledge of this particular three subjects we can work easily with business intelligence and business intelligence is having association with this particular course that is laboratory practice six okay where the practical part will be covered into this particular thing today our discussion will be restricted on the theory part of business intelligence so we will restrict with that only coming towards the course objectives so these are the course objectives which are set up by observing this course objective here the ultimate goal is we must be introduce the concept and components of bi even we need to evaluate the technologies that makes up bi that is data warehousing as well as olap to identify the technologies technological architecture of bi system where we can explain different data pre processing techniques to identify machine learning model as per business needs and to understand bi application in marketing logistic finance and telecommunication sector coming towards the course outcome which is very much important and this is what the challenges in front of us that we need to set up some we need to have an outcome like this okay that is first course outcome differentiate the concept of decision support system and business intelligence at the end of this particular session we should able to you know differentiate between what is exactly dss and what exactly is business intelligence again course outcome 2 that is use of data warehouse and business architecture to design bi system yes after completion of the second unit we are expected or students are expected to use data warehouse and bi architecture to design bi system coming towards the course outcome 3 build graphical reports so here it is expected that our students should able to you know build the graphical reports dashboards that is what which, which is actually needed to visualize the data coming towards the course outcome 4 we should apply the different data pre processing techniques on data set co5 implement the machine learning algorithm as per business need so students should able to you know understand and implement various machine learning algorithms for the business need coming towards the last course outcome design and implement big databases using hadoop ecosystem so if you observe many of the topics are there into dsbda those who have already taught dsbda or students have already learned this particular course that is dsbda and various part is covered from this particular bi so already the base is set up and i think you all can take the students at implementation level application level so that's the beauty coming towards the course content these are the six units which are provided on this particular course okay where the student first understand in at unit number 1 what exactly this decision support system is and how business intelligence is making difference into that then students should understand students have the second unit that is architecture of data warehouse and business intelligence and in unit number 3 students should able to build the report that is reporting or three student uh, unit number 4 data preparation five impact of machine learning in business intelligence process and finally the uh, this particular course will end up with unit number 6 with bi various bi applications coming towards the various reference books this is already again mentioned into the uh, you know the syllabus that is curriculum but the first book is wonderful where many of uh, ma majority of your first two units gets covered that is data warehouse fundamental by john willing so this is wonderful book these are the textbooks which are available uh, again it is given into the syllabus apart from that various e books are given but this particular e books when i open i came to know that there are very few details are given into that i will share at the end of this particular session i will definitely share the details of various e books with you all so that you all can able to you know this this entire course material will be in your inbox and you all can you know start with this particular subject recently coming towards the nptel courses yes we should always encourage the students for you know enrolling to this uh, nptel courses that is business analytics for management decision business analytics and data mining modeling using r 
business analysis for engineers these are the three nptel courses available with respect to this this course that is business intelligence i will appeal all the faculty members those who have not enrolled or not certified from this particular courses you please enroll get certification and even encourage your students for the same now coming towards the copo mapping this is again very very important task i'm i'm really thankful to our bos that they have given us you know the ready made course outcomes as well as the copo mapping as well this is the biggest pain point at many places okay many many faculty members are facing difficulties while copo mapping but friends understand one thing this uh, these are the minimum guidelines that our uh, bos has given to us okay apart from this also you can take if, as per your way of teaching as per the depth ti tool so you are not audible oh i am not audible now audible sir yeah very sorry yeah so i was talking about copo mapping so whatever copo mapping is given by university consider it as the minimum standard apart from this also you can always encourage like for example if i am talking about po5 which is actually related with what modern tools suppose i am teaching the students okay i have uh, if i am organizing the workshop on power bi or maybe tableau if i am conducting workshop for such such tools and if it is if it is said that co3 is actually taking care of what report building so i can announce this one uh, one to what three because where i will conduct the session on power bi okay or will organize the workshop on power bi and student can able to you know build the reports based on that particular power bi not only reports but the dashboard the interactive dashboard if you are conducting such type of sessions apart from our syllabi definitely you can announce whatever copo mat matrix which is given to you okay so this i am again telling you that these are the only and only minimum standard requirements you can always extend it another part if you are facing uh, it, whatever course outcome which are given by you know chairman and entire team if you would like to you know uh, suggest certain changes always communicate it through you know uh, with your head of department to bos so that we can always think about improving this uh, courses you can always modify the co because whatever which is given by university are always considered as minimum standard now coming towards the most important part where you will get the course material so course material like for example dsbd is there again at subject if you go you will get the course material i'll i have already shared the link with you even on my uh, you know the, the youtube channel you will get various videos related to business intelligence now coming towards the opportunities for the students okay there are great opportunities you all must be aware we should always encourage the students that these are different different post okay job post which are available for the field of business intelligence like student can become a data scientist data architect data engineer statistician data science manager machine learning engineer decision scientist because already students have learned database management system data sciences machine learning and now student will definitely opt the business intelligence and you can always ask them that this many opportunities are available but yes they need to sharpen their skill they need to focus much on this again if you are observing we should always ask the students that what are the different different posts or the designations which are available and what are the differences like what is the difference between data analyst data engineer and data scientist that particular thing can be given now if you want the answer for this i would like to showcase you one of the wonderful tool that is developed by open ai you must be aware that open ai have recently developed the chat gpt wonderful uh, you know wonderful open ai tool okay that will definitely help you to answer various queries for example i am opening that chat gpt okay okay uh just a minute
so this is what the wonderful you know uh, thing which is developed by open ai okay many of you must be aware of this but if you are not aware please enjoy this because it is giving you various things okay continue with google you need to log in once you open this you need to log in via your any of the email id and once you log in you can ask various questions to it i hope my screen is visible to you all yes sir yes sir yeah just give me few second so that i'll log in from one more thing one more uh, computer so you need to mention your first name last name so entire details you need to give so i'm giving that trust me this is wonderful tool and you all can enjoy with the tool it is giving it is actually solving majority of our problem so this is what the chat gpt okay and i have already prepared the video that how to use this particular chat gpt on my youtube channel okay so you all can refer that so it will actually save our time and you all can enjoy with that so here chat gpt by mahesh sangvi if you search this you will get this video link okay and this is the video that i was talking about okay so i am sharing the link of this with you all okay i am sharing the link on chat window so that you all can use it you all can definitely like this will definitely help you a lot okay so this i am sharing with you all on chat window so this whenever you are asking any sort of question to it you know it will definitely answer all your queries and i have checked with at various extent that it is giving us the appropriate answers okay so whenever you have difficulties you can ask your student you can train your student that ask the question to that and definitely students will get new knowledge they will definitely learn something new out of it okay so you can always ask encourage the students that understand the differences between this different different posts then who is data analyst so i have given the information that exactly who is the data analyst okay so data analyst takes the data and uses it to help companies to make better business decisions so that is what the job of data analyst data engineer are the one who develops constructs tests and maintains the complete architecture of large scale processing system this is what the job of data engineer and the job of data scientist it is the professional who deals with an enormous mass of structured unstructured data and use their skills in maths and statistics and programming to actually conduct various decisions okay so that is what the job and here i have again given what the different different uh, uh, you know skill sets which are required for data analyst engineer as well as data scientist and even i have mentioned some of the salaries where where you can see that data scientist is high paid job nowadays in the market and this is the reason why student should opt for this particular course that we can always take now coming towards the business intelligence yes business intelligence uh we all are aware that if you go through this video again i will share this link with you on you know uh, the youtube uh, on the chat box so that even this particular video is available on my uh, 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 blog also you all can use that okay that will clarify uh, that that will clarify you what is bi how it is relevant and what are the right people who are actually working with this 
Now coming towards the course material, all this particular course material will be available here on my blog as well as on my YouTube channel. You can always scan this particular QR code, okay, and you will get entire details related to that. Okay, so this is what the orientation of business intelligence. If you have any doubt, you can ask. Otherwise, we will straightforward, you know, uh, start with the unit number one. If anybody has doubt, can please raise your hand or you can ask the doubt if you have. Or if someone would like to add something into it, you're always welcome. Because you all are masters. There is great combination. That is, masters are also available here and entrants are also available here. So master can always add their knowledge, valuable knowledge, so that it will be useful to each and every member. So anybody would like to add something or anybody has any doubt, you can please ask. You can unmute yourself, you can ask, or you can uh, fire a queries on chat box. Okay. No queries means no issues. Okay. This I, I'm, I'm thinking positively. Okay. So let's just wanted to check how many members are here. Okay. I'll be happy that there are term AI and then the term BI. Okay. AI is artificial intelligence. BI is business intelligence. Can you please tell me what is AI and what is BI on chat box? Can anyone? What is AI and what is BI? Artificial intelligence and business intelligence. Can you please mention it into chat box? Friends, I'm waiting for your answers. No one knows it. Okay, at least what is BI, business intelligence? Forget about AI. Many of you must have, yes, business which uses AI. Great. Thank you, Das, ma'am. So, madam has given a very good answer that. Oh, very sorry. Sumitra Das, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, sir has given us, you know, the right answer that business which uses what AI. And I think he has cleared the difference between BI as well as what AI. Yes. Thank you, Power Madam, for your answer. So, let's start with the unit number one. Uh, that is introduction to decision support system and business intelligence. Friends, before we start with this unit, I would like to tell you one thing that whenever you are framing your uh, you know, uh, like course content delivery is much important as rightly said in inauguration. Okay. We all are faculty members and we all are aware that the, you know, delivering content is the toughest job because nowadays we have mixed kind of students with us. Some of the students are very, very smart. And some of the students are not at all interested in the learning of the courses. And we have, you know, we have a big challenge to mold everyone to gain something out of each and every course. Okay. So toughest job we all are doing. And I know that you all must be doing great job into your colleges. Okay. So please prepare, please think, please prepare properly your teaching plan where whatever, whatever topics that you are delivering. Okay. It is associated with which uh, textbook or uh, from where which textbook you are referring for that which reference book you are referring for that i'll be happy if you include this particular column in your teaching as well as uh, in your teaching plan also try to include the course outcome as well as bloom's taxonomy label at which extent you will you know uh, cover that particular content so i'll be happy if you add this three columns that is course outcome 
then Bloom's level as well as which textbook or reference book you are referring for that particular topic so that it will make the life of student simple. Okay, now coming towards the content of unit number one, where we will focus initially on decision support system, and then we will end up with the business intelligence. Now coming towards the decision support system, we all are aware that decision support system means what? Whenever we have to take any sort of decision, there must be some supportive system. For example, if we take, uh, we can have one particular case study that suppose we are actually got the consultancy from one of the umbrella manufacturing industry. Okay. One of the umbrella manufacturing industry and they are asking us how much, how many or how much umbrella that we should manufacture because the selling of that umbrella may start from the month of April or May. Okay. I'm saying April or May because nowadays in summer season also people are using umbrella. Okay. And we all must be aware that since June or July, there will be rainy season. And for that, we need what umbrella. But the question itself is that how much umbrella should be manufactured by manufacturing unit? If we say that, let's say 1 million, then the challenge, how we have identified that 1 million, what is the base for that? What is the support system for that? So that whatever decision we have given, we must have some base. We must have and we must have to understand whatever which is historical data, available data, we need to do market analysis at the end, how many competitors are there. And finally, we can end up with what the conclusion that this many umbrellas that one can manufacture. And that is the reason where decision support system is actually playing role for conducting or for taking any decision, there must be some base. Aaj ki date mein, aap sabhi log, koi bhi decision koi bhi leta hum log puchte. Why you have taken this decision? What is the base? What is the logic behind that particular decision? So that particular thing can be possible by using decision support system. So decision support system, if you observe, decision makers use communication technology to identify and solve the problems, complete decision process task, and finally they make the decision. So friends, DSS in, in entire this unit, we will see what exactly is DSS. I will not focus much on the content, okay? But I wanted to highlight few of the part and for, the, for that reason, I'm going through all the slides, okay? So these are the slides which will be helpful for you for delivering and even you can add more uh, content or you can modify these particular slides and I'll be happy if you share wonderful slides with all. So it will be helpful to all the uh, members. Okay. So this is what the decision support system, where you can see that decision support system. And if, when I'm talking about business intelligence, this particular unit, you can see that decision support system will be one of the input for that. And apart from that, there are so many things like data warehouse, data mining, CRM, OLAP, all this particular thing were needed for business intelligence. I just wanted to mention, I just wanted to tell you that business intelligence and DSS, what is the role that I wanted to mention? Why DSS? So this is quite clear here from this particular slide that decision support system are used to make business decision often based on data collected by online transaction processing system. Okay, so decision support system will help you to analyze historical data and we can take some decision. The examples of business decisions are what item to stock, which items to be stocked, what insurance premium to change, to whom to send advertisement. So this is what the business decision. And when you are talking about example of data on the basis of that, you will make the decision. So retail uh, sales transaction details, customer profile, okay, maybe they, that may include income, age, gender, etc. So this we need to understand like what is exactly the business decisions and what are the data that will support us to conduct or to take such decisions. Coming towards the OV of DSS, so you can understand that DSS, for DSS, we need, you know, data warehousing, data mining, data analysis, and statistical analytical packages. So all these four things we need so that we can work out easily with decision support system. Now, coming towards the definition of uh, 
system, we all are aware that actually this particular unit starts with the system. It is nothing to do with decision system, decision support system. It is generalized definition of system, which is actually, uh, you know, added as a part of this particular curriculum. So we all are aware that what is system, it takes some input, process it, and finally it produces what some output. And that is what, which is important. But making or delivering or deploying the efficient system is the big challenge and we all are striving hard for the same. So point were started from that. And if you observe representation of the decision-making process here, four most important thing, which is given rationality and problem solving, then decision-making process, then types of decision and approaches for decision-making. So let's start with the rationality and problem solving. If you are observing this diagram, you can understand that the decision can be taken taken based on the criteria and there will be various alternatives available. Okay. So there will be problem. There will be environment based on that. You will be having alternatives means you will be having multiple decision. Okay. Based on this criteria, you will choose optimized decision and that will help the business to grow. Sometimes alternatives are unlimited and sometimes alternatives are only in the form of logical flow. For example, the answer may be in the yes or no, that kind of thing where alternatives are very less, only two alternatives will be there. And in some cases, in some applications, alternatives can be unlimited. We need to evaluate each and every alternative to find what will be the best alternative so that we can take the decision based on that criteria. Now coming towards the uh, this particular part, you can observe that this entire system is actually divided into, okay, it is divided into exclusion and evaluation. Exclusion is telling you that how many, like so many alternatives which will be there in front of you, which alternatives to exclude and which alternative to be considered that that you need to carry out and you need to whatever alternative that you have considered you need to evaluate each and every alter, uh, alternative so that you will get the feasible solution the optimized solution to take final decision coming towards the decision making process it is basically a three phase process intelligence design and choice and later on, it is extended to the newer version where two more procedures were added like implementation and control. So this particular, though the words are different, but we have already seen this particular part. Okay. This entire thing is already well known to the students because it is already covered into DSBDA, that is data science and business, uh, big data analytics, where we must know what is exactly intelligence. Intelligence is telling you that what exactly the problem is. We need to identify the challenges, problems, and that we need to put forth. In design, we need to, you know, we need to identify the solution to the problem. And that is what the main job where it is critical phase where various alternative solution that we need to identify. Okay. And finally, we need to think about the exclusion of like which alternative we need to exclude, which alternative we need to include, which alternative we have to consider. And finally, we need to develop the model for, you know, we need to develop the model for uh, evaluating all that alternative. So choices will give you what, which are the necessary uh, alternatives that you have selected that you need to, you know, evaluate them on the basis of their performance criteria that comes into what choices here mathematical modeling is actually playing good role okay and the best tool for choice is decision tree coming towards the implementation once you have decided the optimized solution you need to simply implement it and you need to see the evaluation so implementation plan that you need to build here then finally, when you are deploying uh, this particular, uh, you know, system, you need to check whether it is satisfied or it is not. You need to identify the challenges. And finally, again, the process may start from what the uh, start. So this is what the entire, uh, you know, process, um, decision making process, which is given and which is divided into, you know, different, different phases. Coming towards the types of decision. 
there are basically uh, types of decisions are actually classified into nature and scope. If you observe based on nature, there are basically three types of decision, structured, unstructured and semi-structured. Semi Again, we all are aware in DSBDA, structured, unstructured, semi-structured are already cleared. And here now there is great need to handle structured as well as what unstructured data which is available in the market. Okay, according to scope, you can observe that. Okay, basic on the basis of nature, these three types are there. On the basis of scope, there are three types like strategic, tactical, and operational. To, to look on this, you all are aware that structured is ultimately well defined. Unstructured, this is what the phases where we can three phases were included that is intelligence design and and choices are also what it will be again unstructured semi structure is combination of both structured as well as unstructured coming toward the strategy strategic decisions are actually they are affecting entire organization whenever you are taking any sort of decision entire organization will get affected okay it may go at very good like beneficial side side or it may go at what the downside also that depends on how the strategic decision is normally taken and we all are aware that strategic decisions are normally for a longer period of time we normally whenever we are developing a strategic plan it will be a five years plan it will be a three years plan or more than that so that is what normally known as strat strat uh, strategic decision coming toward the tactical tactical is restricted with a single unit that is single department that you can say and it, it 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 also for a short period of time so whenever we have to take short term goals we are talking about tactical decision can be one of the example for long term goals we can think about the strategic plan coming towards the operational it is with very specific task for example today we are conducting this session so operation is what we are executing this so it is, it is what the operational part so it, it affect a small part but yes it is again very much useful so from this you should understand the types of decision uh, you know like what are the different different types of decision based on nature and the scope now approaches approaches to the decision making process so preliminary distinction is normally made based on what the rational approach and political organizational approach when we are talking about the rational approach yes everything will be defined okay it will the major factor will be economic technical legal ethical procedural and the political and now coming towards the political organization there is no clear cut definition of it but yes it will be based on some selection criteria this is again one of the part which is included that is evolution of the uh, information system so this is what the first generation were in 1950s and we all are aware that the computer were acting as like mainframe computer were there and major applications were payroll and accounting system second generation was in 1960 and 70 where oltp played the role and the major applications were related to crm and erp Coming towards the third generation, which were introduced in 1980s to 1990s, where the personal computer, that is PCs, were there. And DSS is actually started from this particular part. From 1980s, you can see that the term DSS is coming into the picture. In fourth generation, there was actually internet and major development. And we have seen the e-commerce and social media cloud, cloud uh, computing platforms in the fourth generation and now coming towards the fifth generation we all are there we all are aware that nowadays big data artificial intelligence iot these are the buzzwords which are normally actually playing great role now coming towards the definition of decision support system yes dss is an interactive computer system helping decision makers to combine data and models to solve semi structured and unstructured problems so friends we must have data we must to develop a model based on this too we can have a wonderful uh, you know solution to any sort of st structured or unstructured problems and decision maker can use this data as well as what data models now decision support system extended system, extended structure okay where you can see that it has mainly data management model management interaction and knowledge management coming towards the development of decision support system okay where we need to focus much on what the end like we have seen this particular part into software engineering as well and it was it was also there into dsbda where the data science life cycle was okay. it normally start with 
the requirement analysis okay and end up with what the deployment so what exactly is happening into requirement yes we all are aware that we need to understand for which purpose we are actually developing the decision support system then we need to plan it we need to analyze the requirement what exactly we want to accomplish okay and when we need we, we need to accomplish so that will be there in case of design we will see how the things will happen which particular model we will use and that model building will be there finally in implementation okay we will implement and we will check whether the solution whatever we have given is successful or going towards the failure and finally in implementation there are various this four major points which are there that is change management yes if anything any requirement is changing we are taking care of that we are actually developing uh, we may use either rapid prototyping development or agile development okay for developing this particular system as well as extreme programming techniques okay so this is all about decision support system i know that uh, actually i am going so fast because the simple reason behind it is that i wanted to cover one of the tool that is power bi okay the contents are already available uh, the contents will be with you okay and i'm sure that you all can uh, deliver it well to the students but while content delivery please add different types of pedagogy where you can not only stick with the traditional teaching learning process there are various different approaches okay of uh, which is actually you know given by various faculty members so at the end of this particular you know uh, today's day i'll be happy whatever group that we have created for business intelligence faculty members please don't leave that group and i appeal each and every faculty member whatever you are doing new apart from your you know uh, the traditional teaching please share all the details the way you are actually delivering your content to the students with all other faculty members and whatever gaps whatever additional sessions that you are conducting for bi please share all that details in the group so that it will be useful helpful to develop other student community of the other colleges as well if you observe all our faculty members of our college entire data is available on our blog entire ppts entire course material videos entire details are available it's mainly for the purpose that it will be open to all the students as well as faculty members i'm not telling that whatever content we are uh, deploying or whatever content that we have developed is the only standard but yes something minimum standard that we have given on our blog and we are actually you know all the data is open for critics you all can always suggest the points for improvement this is what i wanted to suggest you all on behalf of this particular part okay now we have made the decision support system now coming towards the business intelligence and we need to understand clearly what is the difference between decision support system and business intelligence and how both are related so let us start with the business intelligence various definitions of business intelligence were given but if you are observing this diagram okay where if we have if we want to take any sort of decision analysis and questions will be given alternative actions will be given and the person manually actually the checking and he is actually taking what decision when bi is added with this particular person it will add some values like many alternatives can be considered more accurate can conclusion can be made an effective and timely decision can be taken if we include bi so based on that this definition i like most most that is bi refers to the skills processes technologies and application and practices used to support decision making so decision support system and bi i hope this particular definition is clearly telling us that bi is there to sub, to you know uh, B bi is there which is actually help us to take a proper decision by analyzing the existing data now for this we need this and this is already known to many of you that what is data what is information and what is knowledge it is already there in database management system itself i have given an example those who are entry level faculty members if you have if you have not taken database management system and if you are directing directly taking this course that is business intelligence then what is data i can give you an example data is raw it is fact okay that is normally known as let's say birth date for example if i ask you today what is your birth date okay 
then definitely you will answer me that if i ask you what was your birth date before one month or before one year birth date was same if i ask you what will be your birth date after 10 years again it will be same but, it, but because it is raw it is fact it will not change over the time what is changing over the time information is changing over the time for example if i ask you the same question instead of birth date if i ask you what was your age what is your age today you will answer that if i ask you what was your age before one year definitely two days age minus one year definitely this value will change if i ask you what will be your age after 10 years again it will change so information keeps on changing and it is defined as it is actually what it is processing data and giving you what some output for example if i ask you who is kiran if i ask you who is kiran can can you please answer it on chat chat box who is kiran i want gender of kiran who is kiran please answer i'm sorry i'm asking you some foolish question but i wanted to clear you the difference between data and information yes who is kiran means the gender of kiran not clear gender okay somebody said girls boy somebody said boy yeah so mixed kind of opinion is coming okay because it is data now if i say that mr kiran okay tell me the gender of mr kiran boy boy so clear cut answer will come that the gender will be what boy because it is like we have we have processed that data and we have added what something before that that is mr and that is giving us clear cut idea that the gender of this particular thing this particular name will be what boy so information is always what processing data so here with this example we can see that this age is actually calculated based on what birth date for example if i ask you what is your today's age okay just just today okay just to uh, just for a fun okay can anyone will tell me your age we all are aware that we when computer engineering is asking it means that it is all about year months okay yeah somebody of you have given some answer right okay now if i i'll make your life complicated okay i'll ask you whenever we are asking that we want the difference between okay uh, like difference between uh, your age should be in the year in the month okay in the days in the hours then minutes and second now can anyone will answer i want your age in year then month days then minute uh, then hours minutes and seconds if somebody will ask me this question i will tell you that it is difficult to answer reason is very simple when i am talking about second the moment i am giving you certain value again it is it skips on changing so it is difficult to say tell the age so when somebody is asking me my age since i am a man of database management system it is very difficult for me to answer but normally i say that aaj means hame ek we need to give one time moment or we need to give something based on that we are actually giving so today's date minus birth date will give us what age so this is what information that we can calculate and it keeps on changing coming towards the knowledge okay coming towards the knowledge okay when i am observing when i was analyzing my own youtube channel i have seen that the student okay the youth is actually what using more about the youtube channel i have seen that particular path so that is what the analysis that you can you, uh, okay you can finalize so knowledge will give you what certain kind of pattern that will help you to take what decision so this is all about data information and knowledge now coming towards the business intelligence where we need to understand this is what the typical architecture of business intelligence okay and here you can observe that the operational system is actually playing great role etl that is extract transform and load these are the tools which are needed because we are actually you know we are actually taking data from different different sources etl will help us to convert it into what the common schema and that will be loaded into what data warehouse 
And once data is there in data warehouse, then we'll definitely keep on analyzing that data to take particular decision. So this triangle, this pyramid will tell you that this is what the main components of business intelligence system. It starts with data sources and it ends with what decision, the topmost uh, phase of this particular, uh, you know, the topmost component of this business intelligence system is what decision. So let's see one by one, what is data sources, data warehouse or data mart, data exploration, data mining, optimization and decisions. So these are the major components that is data sources. We all are aware that we need to gather the data from different, different sources that sources may be uh, homogeneous. It may be heterogeneous and it will be the job of ETL where we need to convert it into what the same schema. So that will be data warehouse and data marts. We all are aware that the difference between data warehouse is generalized term data mart is specialized term coming towards the business intelligence methodology. We need to know that it supports various DSS applications like multidimensional cube analysis, exploratory data analysis, time series analysis, inductive learning models for data mining, optimization model. Again, I'm telling you all these three were already covered into the DSBDA, okay, that is uh, data science and big data analytics where the things were covered. Coming towards the data exploration, we need to explore the data, okay, where the passive BI analysis is done. Okay, and when we are talking about data mining, where active BI analysis is done. Okay, so again, we need to extract information and knowledge, and normally it includes mathematical model of PR, that is pattern recognition, ML, machine learning, and DM, that is data mining. Coming towards the optimization, we need to optimize the model. Okay, and that will help us to choose best solution among the various alternatives which are given. And finally, we will take what decision, we will see whatever decision we have taken, we will evaluate it and we'll check whether it is, uh, and we'll come to the conclusion whether the decision was right or wrong, whether it was beneficial or not. Now, BI cycle, it has four phases, analysis, insight, decision, and evaluation. Analysis is important to recognize and correctly specify the problem in details. Insight, it will assist you to conduct team meetings and uses collaboration means you will involve all the stakeholders here. Decision, it will help you, okay, use to give management guidance. And finally, evaluation, the entire complex system that assists to evaluate the decision that you have made. Coming towards the enabling factors in business intelligent projects. So technologies, analytics, and human resources. If you observe here, all out of this three, HR is very important. That is human resources, okay? Where we need to focus more on the personal skill, mental agility, and willingness to accept the challenges or changes in the system. In technologies, we all are aware that hardware, software, networking were the basic thing. And nowadays, the thing which is actually playing great role is choosing appropriate algorithm as well as what techniques. Analytical, where we will be having mathematical model as well as analytical methodologies, which will play a key role in information announcement and knowledge extraction. This, these are the enabling factor, three enabling factor in business intelligent project. This is what the development of business intelligence system. This is what the architecture, which is given where it is de de again de uh, divided into analysis, design, planning and implementation and control phase. Okay, so this is what like this is this particular architecture will help us to clear what exactly we are doing in the, at analysis, design, planning and implementation. I have already covered this particular part, so I'm skipping it right now. Coming towards the business intelligence ethics. Yes, it is very much important that we need to think about our moral principle, our moral values, whenever we are dealing with what the data here, the major concern will be on privacy, fairness, accuracy and the transparency. So we need to focus on this particular part as well. So this is all about the unit number one, that is decision support system and business intelligence. If you have any doubt, you can please ask or we can straight up, uh, straightforward start with what the architecture. But before this, I would like to, you know, I would like to uh, uh, showcase you how to use BI. Okay, that is Power BI. But before Power BI, I wanted to clear you the difference between the dashboard that is normal dashboard and the interactive dashboard. If you have difficulty, you can ask 
or I can take you to the tour of dashboard. Okay, so let's start with what dashboard. Okay, I have created one dashboard for me with the help of our faculty member. This entire dashboard that I have prepared, it's in Google spreadsheet. So no programming is needed. Only one line of code is enough to develop such dashboard. So just to have a look, okay, you can see that dashboard is actually combination of various visualization tools. So you can see that this is what the dashboard that I have created, okay, where the different, different things are there. For example, the student strength of my department, result analysis of my department, how many MOUs are there? What is the ratio, gender ratio that is calculated here? Again, the placement statistics, which is highly needed thing every time. Event summary, how many email events we are conducting on different, different levels. For example, we have different, different associations. Okay. So what kind of events we are conducting? Okay. How many events we have conducted that data? Okay. So this way I have actually developed this particular dashboard and it is helping me like anything. Okay. So to showcase you one thing about it, that for example, I'm interested in only last three years of data. See that I'm, I have, I have removed the 2019 and 2018. So now you can see that the data of three years, it is showing me. Okay. So I'm trying to include interactive thing into this, but this trust me, this, this particular thing is not interactive. Okay. I'll showcase you how interactive dashboard can be designed. Okay. So here you can observe why this dashboard is essential. So when I was acting as head of computer department, okay, I was getting various queries from my principal that how many students are placed. So the answer is with me that Currently 48 students were placed out of 139 for 2022-23 batch. Okay. So I'll answer this question because this is what the statistics, which are, which are normally available to any of the head of the department. But now if the question is framed like this, how many students were placed into TCS? Now I need to ask, I need to call placement coordinator, training and placement department, training and placement coordinator. I need to ask him like how many students were placed into TCS, then he will provide that information and I will provide that information to whom principal. So if you observe at many places, principal is asking me various questions. Okay. I'm simply passing that question to whom. So what is the job of head of department? Sorry, Pilal Jolo, head of the department. So I was just acting as a buffer. Okay. So because principal asking me query. As a head, I was under, I, I, I'm about to understand that particular query and I was passing that query to a particular coordinator, right? So every time principal is asking me something, if it is a number game, I can answer. If not, I have to always pass that query and take the answer from coordinator. Again, if the question coming means, for example, the way I have asked you, how many students were placed into TCS? Okay. I need to ask to coordinator, then I'll be having that information. If somebody will ask me how many students were, were placed into Infosys, now the name of companies change. Again, I need to call coordinator. Again, I have to take that information. And again, I have to pass that particular information. So if you observe the job of head of department, the way I was acting was just as a buffer. I was acting as a buffer, not as a intelligent person, only buffer. Because I was only having what I was collection of references where somebody is asking me something. I was passing that information to someone and I, mean, I was taking that information. Okay. So I have decided why not to become an intelligent person so that we can answer each and every query without asking anyone. And for that purpose, actually we have developed this particular dashboard. Now, if somebody will ask me how many students were placed into TCS, I can open this. I can drill down this particular dashboard. Okay. I can go into depth. Somebody is asking me about what the 2020 to 23 placement. So I will open that sheet. Okay. So I have opened that. And now entire details are with me. 
if i simply filter on company name i can say that this many students were placed into what tcs if the question is coming like this how many students have got more than 5 lakhs of a package so again i can filter here on package and i can say that i can give this particular information if somebody will ask me tell me how many students were placed into bangalore so i need to again identify i need to filter on location so all the answers are with me in on my pocket now if you observe this dashboard okay the beauty of this dashboard is that for taking any sort of decision it is helping me a lot okay when my bosses were asking me any sort of question i can give that answer quickly from this particular dashboard without calling anyone again the beauty of this dashboard is that it is accessible from any place you can access it from mobile you can access it from web anywhere you can access so again location were not dependent otherwise the normal message sir i am on leave today i can give you this information tomorrow or if i want if i have to give the answer from that place i need to call to the person i have to take that information and again i have to pass but nowadays all this particular task were reduced whatever frequently asked questions which were there i have prepared that particular thing by using blog okay but if you are observing what is the challenge with this particular blog it is not interactive okay if i click here okay or if i click here it is doing nothing because it is not interactive it is a simple dashboard okay to know the power of interactive dashboard to understand the interactive dashboard i am giving you one of the session on power bi many of you must be aware about power bi you must have used it but those who are entrant for you this particular session will be useful and you can always encourage the students and here you can cover one of the gap okay or uh, one of the gap okay uh, gap session on this power bi if this power bi is already included in laboratory you can think about tableau you can think about some different different you know tools which are available so let's have a tour of power bi get started the moment you will open power bi you need to get started you can enroll through your email id then you can select various sources sources can be selected from different different way you may from you may take the data from excel spreadsheet sql server or different different data set databases currently i am giving you uh, the you know i am taking the example of excel because i have sample copy of it so i have selected excel so i have this sample data so i am selecting that simply saying open this data is already available with all of you okay this is what the data of admission current admission okay and this is available okay to your uh, student section where this is the data which is actually given by dt that is director of technical education thanks to them they have given this data okay and i am using it readily for the analysis so when you will load this excel sheet it will ask you how many sheets are there i have selected that sheet also and finally i am clicking on load okay so that this entire data will be loaded into my system for me it can be data mart for me it can be data warehouse depends on like the size okay so once your data is loaded you can analyze that data and you can prepare the dashboard and that's the beauty of power bi so it is actually loading that data okay and once the data is loaded okay we will get an indication how many records were loaded okay and if there is certain errors into uh, recovering some data then it will give you they see that it is giving us some error but it is saying that one 385 records were loaded so let's work out with 385 what is the problem right so i am working on that 385 data see that when we load that data okay at this side okay uh, just to focus on that i'm just showing you this here you need to focus i have already uh, marked the rectangle for that okay once you go into this you will see that this admitted data is there and when we click on that it will showcase all the fields okay all the columns which are available into that particular data set that i have uh, loaded here okay now based on this we can prepare a dashboard if you want to check what data actually it has then you can click here again i am highlighting that okay you can click here on right uh, sorry left top corner where i have highlighted that uh, by using rectangle okay by using square so i can click here that is data and it will show me the column as well as what 
the data which is already loaded into this particular system. So you can see that this data is what loaded. This is live data of 2020 to 23 admission of my college. And that is what I wanted to showcase you, like how we can analyze this. Okay. So I'll again click on reporting part because we want to build a report. Okay. So for building report, we will actually take what uh, any of the so many uh, different different charts which are available here. Now it's up to you what you want to take. Currently, I'm taking what the stacked bar chart. So I have taken that simply click on that so that it will come here. Okay. And we need to give some X and Y direction to it. Like what will be there on X and what will be there on what Y. So currently I'm taking that. I want this particular, uh, like course wise analysis I have to make. Okay. So what will be the field that I want to choose will be the course, right? So I'm searching that course. See that course name is available. So I have selected that. Once I have selected course name, okay, I need to choose, okay, one dimension I have choose, I have chosen. I need to choose one more dimension that will help me to draw that particular graph. So I'm trying to select the number of student that is serial number that I'm choosing. So I have taken serial number. So the moment I have taken serial number, okay, you can see that this particular graph will be in front of us. But currently it is showing me what sum of serial number. Okay. Again, focus here where exactly it is showing. You can see that at X axis, it is showing me that sum of, okay. Sum of serial number. I'm not interested in sum. I'm interested in count. So I will change it and I will say that count. So I've selected count. Now it is giving me what count based on branches. Okay, you can increase the font beautification can be done. That's not a big deal. So you can see that computer engineering different different branches are there and it is showing me what record according to accordingly. Okay, so this is one thing that I have taken. Now, since I wanted to show you that what is interactive dashboard. So I'm taking one more graph. Okay, I'm taking one more graph. Okay, so now this time I'm using column chart. Okay, this time I'm using what column chart. So I'm taking new column chart. I have taken that. Okay. Again, here I want some analysis based on district. So district wise, how many students were admitted in my college that I wanted to check. So first analysis I have made based on courses. Now I'm doing analysis based on what the district friends. We all are aware that nowadays days are very good for us. So admissions are there, but yes, we should always analyze the admission. Definitely it will help college to grow into quality admissions. So I have selected district. Okay. So district that I have selected. Okay. And now again, serial number, I will select as a Y axis. Okay. As a Y axis, I will select the serial number. So by default, it will give me summation of that. I don't want some. So again, I will select here and I'll take what count. And now you can see that. Now you can see that it is giving me the list along with what the district. So from Nasik district, we have major admissions. So it is showing me that Nasik. Okay. And after that, which are the districts like district wide wise count is given to me. Now I have to check. Okay. Now what I'm doing, please focus it properly so that you will understand the difference between normal dashboard and interactive dashboard. Now I want that from computer engineering branch. Okay. Okay. From or from Nasik Nasik district, how many students were ad admitted into different, different courses. Now I'm selecting it. The moment I'm selecting it, you can observe here. Some of the part is now disable and some of the part is active. So it is actually what this is known as interactive dashboard friends. It is actually helping us for developing interactive dashboard. So it is what the power BI tool that will help you. So likewise, you can create many of, you know, many of uh, the points and you can create your own interactive dashboard. Okay. You can take many things, just one point. I, I wanted to highlight here. Many people are actually taking what map I'm taking map also. Okay. I have taken a map based on this map. I'm selecting the district. Okay. I'm selecting the district. So I have selected it. Okay. So district is selected and it will develop what map. 
okay district wise map will be developed here okay so district will come and finally i have to choose how many students are there are district wise that i am choosing again so again serial number i will choose so i have selected serial number as usual i need to give what i need to make it a count but now if you observe district is coming coming at legion okay focus here district is coming at legion you need to you know you need to take it at location the moment you are putting it at location now you can see this particular graph properly and where you will get what some data so friends it is very important when you are choosing this data it is very much important that what exactly we are actually planning to choose that should be decided properly and we need to understand each and every part of this particular graphs okay so again you can see that the bubble is there so it is showing me what admission from nasik okay so likewise if i select here okay see that different different data are there now again if i select nasik it will show me something different if i have selected nasik it is showing me so automatically whatever i have i am adding whatever chart i am adding it will be get interacted and this is what the beauty of power bi friend you can save this particular report just by clicking save okay it will be saved and you can communicate this particular report to anyone okay you can communicate this particular report to anyone so if somebody wants that same effect then the, the person should also have what bi or you can simply export all this particular data into what the uh, pdf file and you can communicate that particular pdf so this is all about the power bi okay so you can use this particular tool that is power bi i hope this will definitely helpful to you all and you all can you know encourage the students for the same okay so moving towards the next unit that is unit number 2 if you have difficulty you can please ask okay now the second unit that is architecture of dw and bi so we have already practically seen how the architecture is there how we are collecting data from different different sources how it is transform extracted transform and loaded into data warehouse and then we have analyzed it to take certain decision support okay so that particular part is that we have already practically we have seen now we need to see that theoretical part what exactly is this so this many contents that we need to cover at unit number 2 this is what the data warehouse okay is the foremost repository for the data available for developing business intelligence architecture and decision support system so data warehouse is one of the big support based on that only we are actually doing so much of analysis okay and finally we are actually developing business intelligence as well as decision support system okay so it is normally based on relational databases you can you know you can you can work it with relational databases okay so data warehousing indicates the whole set of integrated activities involved in designing implementing and using data warehouses okay it contains what historical data so whatever data which were there means maine the way i have shown you data set okay that was historical data 2022-23 admission is over. Okay, so I have shown that particular data. So it was historical data. Okay, so if you are observing uh, data warehousing, it has mainly key features like subject oriented, integrated, time variant, and non-nullable. These are there are these are the main three categories of data feeding into data warehouse. You can take data from internal sources like from your own back offices, front offices, or web based. you can take data from external sources like you can collect the data from various market survey gis or different different data sources and some of the data normally known as personal data where bi analyst will actually what generate this particular data so friends we are, we have in, internal data sources external data sources and bi analyst will help us to to de design or to generate the new data that is known as personal data so these are the three different categories of data which is normally feeded into data warehouse 
Now coming towards the data warehouse versus operational DBMS. So now you can see here, it is giving you clear cut distinctions between what is OLTP, what is OLAP and the distinct features of OLTP and OLAP. You must be aware about this OLTP that is online transaction processing. The major task is RDBMS, whereas the major task of OLAP is what? Data warehousing. Here, it, it has day-to-day -day operations. In case of OLTP, it will be having day-to-day -day operations. In case of OLAP, data analysis and decision-making is the major task, okay? So if you observe the distinct features, okay, user and system, okay? So year versus what market? So OLTP works on year, whereas OLAP, OLAP works on market. If you're talking about data content, Okay, so OLTP is talking about current, OLAP is talking about historical data. So BI is all about like you will take historical data and you can you can take some decision so that we can predict the future decision and we can support the decision support system. Database design here it is using ER diagram. Okay, that is OLTP is using ER diagram, whereas OLAP is actually using star schema. So here, the star schema is mainly playing role because we are interested in showing statistical information. Coming towards the DA, DW architecture, that is data warehouse architecture, you can see this particular architecture, it is almost that, that I have already shown to you, okay, that is data warehouse architecture. Now coming towards the difference between OLTP and OLAP, this is what the difference is between OLTP and OLAP. We should give this particular to the students because many times this question is asked into university question paper. So this is what the difference between OLTP and OLAP. Now coming towards the cubes and multidimensional analysis. So cubes, then two-dimensional table, like we all are aware that database is what single uh, dimension table means we have columns and based on column, we are actually adding values. Okay. So that is single call a single dimension. When we are talking about two dimension, then pivot table is actually playing role. Okay. So we will be having pivot table and pivot table will be two dimensional where we will be having some column and some row, which will be associated. And based on that, we will actually what grab certain values. So it will be two dimensional. Cubes will be three dimensional and there will be what multi dimensional analysis. So we need to focus on this multi dimensional uh, at much. Okay. So if you are observing in multi dimension, there are basically dimension tables as well as what fact table. Dimension table are our master tables and fact tables that we are normally uh, preparing. Okay. So that we can collect the important information from each and every table and we can present the statistical or the summary of that particular data. For example, if you're observing here, here it is sale. Okay. This sale is what it is fact table. Okay. What it is doing, it is connected with the customer. So it has taken customer data from this customer. Then it is taking point of sale, this particular data from this. It is taking product from the master data that is from product. It is taking the information of supplier from the supplier master data. It is taking the time from this particular time database. And finally, it is adding some values like quantity, price, and discount. And this will make what this will make the star schema. This schema is known as star schema. It is combination of what fact and dimension table. So fact table is normally, okay, normally majority of the foreign keys are coming and based on that we are adding some more values to conclude with what this is some some kind of statistical analysis so that will be your fact table okay coming towards the next schema that is snowflake schema where you will be having what you will be having the schemas like this so more than one fact table which will be there and more than one dimension table which will be there so for a particular application you may need it star schema or snowflake schema again there will be what the fact consideration schema that is again having what the combination of various fact tables various you know uh, different different dimension tables so that is the fact consideration schema that's it from my end. Uh, okay, so I have tried to cover various topics of what the unit number one and unit number two. If you have difficulties, you can ask me. Okay, entire data will be available. Entire sheets will be available here. As I have already told you that I'm sharing this link with you once again on chat window. 
so that entire presentation will be available to you. If you want details of all units, it will be again available. Now coming towards the last point I'm covering and then I'll end up. I have prepared this, okay, to create better understanding in my student. Why student should opt this particular course? That is BI. What will be the benefit by opting this particular course? So you can open this link. Okay. I have, this is this link of nokri.com. So I'll, I'm opening that in front of you. It will open this link and this will show you how many job opportunities are available for this field that is business intelligence. Now you can see that this particular word will be here. See that business intelligence is here. Okay. It is coming here. It is coming here. So at every places, wherever there is opportunity or opening based on what business intelligence, that thing will be shown here. And this, you can showcase the students. Okay. You can, you can showcase everything from this. Even this can be the base to identify gaps. You can observe here job description, which is given. What is given into this job description? If you open this, you will understand what is the job skill set which is needed. See that entire JD is given, job description is given. Okay. And from this, you can analyze that. See that BI solution is needed. Okay. Likewise, you can see that what, what exactly is needed by the student to be prepared. So this must, this must skill set, which are needed. Okay. Students should be expert into what various fields, various different, different things. So that is shown here. So this way you can identify if it is, if all this particular description is covered into what your course, no problem. If not covered, you can identify it as a gap. Okay. And you can straightforward correlate with what it industry demands. So this is what the way you can encourage your student and you can generate more interest in the students. So that's it from my end. If you have any difficulty, if you have any doubt, you can ask me the question. Hello, sir. Uh, one query is ar arrived and chat chat window. Yes. Please see it. Okay. So thanks to Dr. Vajit, sir. He has asked the query whether Power BI tool available online or we have to download and install on machine. Yes, sir. It is available online as well as you can download the desktop version. Power BI has different, different version. You can use it on mobile. You can use it web-based. You can even download uh, a desktop version, which is freely available on Microsoft website. So you can use that. I'll share the video of Power BI with you so that you all can, you know, you all can use that Power BI easily. Uh, in my video, I have given what the description itself into that. So just a minute, I'll simply search that and share the link with you. This is the video of seven minutes that will clear you how to use Power BI. So I'm searching that video. This is what the video. Okay. And I'll share this video with you on chat window. Since my channel is monetized, so, so many advertisements are coming, you know? Okay. So I have shared this. YouTube link of power BI as well. Okay. So sir, you can download the desktop version as well as you can use web-based version also, but I will suggest download web, uh, desktop version that will help you a lot to understand the power of power BI. I hope I have addressed your query. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Fine. If there are no more queries, I'm thankful to all the good listeners being a teacher. Okay. And thank you for the cooperating me to entire session. I hope I have tried to fulfill 
the need which is there for a FOP. I'm sorry if I if, if I am unable to give you any new thing because some of the master people were already there. Okay, but please, I'll be happy if you add content from your end into what WhatsApp group so that everyone will be uh, you know can use that particular content. Uh, thank you, BOS Computer Engineering and SNJB's KBJN College of Engineering for giving me this opportunity to, you know, put forth my views. Thank you, Power Madam. Thank you, Shakat VP Sir, Surse, Surse Madam, and Head of the Department of Computer Engineering, uh, Professor Kenjan Sangvi Madam. Thank you all. All to you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing this amazing knowledge with all of us. Uh, like chat GPT latest AI application technology uh, that you have wonderfully explained, then uh, what exactly data knowledge information with real time applications. And after that, the wonderful concept you have shared with all that is Power BI. So thank you so much, sir, once again for this wonderful session. Thank you so much. Dear all participants, now there will be the lunch break uh, till 12.45. Then we will gather at 12.45 sharp, all of you. Thank you all. Again, I'll announce there will be lunch break for half an hour at 12.45 PM. Thank you all. Yes, sir. dear participants, uh, feedback link will be shared after completing the last session. <laughs> Attendance come, feedback link will be shared on chat window as well as WhatsApp group. Thank you all.